Hang on a minute, I think I heard my name there. Anyway, on with this week's video. Thanks again for tuning back into the channel. In this week's video, we are going to be looking at using Photoshop brushes to finish an image. Now, I'm not going to get into the detail about the brushes. I'm just going to show you, in this instance, my thought process of what I go through to finalise an image. And you're going to see, I'm going to put an image on screen just now, this is a starting point and this is the end point. And now there's just a couple of overlays in there. The rest of the image is completed using brushes, in this case, smoke and dust brushes. But it's just to hopefully give you an idea of an easy process that you can go through to edit your own images. So let's dive right in with part one. Every layer that you can see in the seafoam colouring is made up with brushes and that's what formulates the entire image. That's what gives the entire image its depth and for me allows me to work right through the images. You can see everything here and how it's been created and I'll show you how with the sandworm how I actually thought about that and how I worked through with the brushes. So you can see the image slowly building up as we add in all the different brushes. And we're using smoke brushes and quite a few other different techniques for this, but nothing that you can't download or actually do for yourself. And you see that of overlays in here as well, but with the sea foam, that's the overlay now. And then we have honor it just to give a slight glow to the front of the ships. And then the last touch is in the camera raw filter where we use some of the colour profiles just to finalise the image. So that actually lets you see how many layers of brushes there are. Everything that was seafoam coloured is a brush and only a couple of them are overlays. And you can see a massive difference it made to the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just using the sandworm, either that the video would be too long, how I came about using the brushes and a couple of other effects to get the depth, shall we say, or the fictional reality, visual reality of the sandworm moving through the sand. This is a simple dust brush and it's taken right down in size and what I'm doing is I'm selecting colours from the surrounding environment to try and build up depth in the, the brush because if the light is coming over from, in this case, the left hand side, I'm just looking for random areas just to put this in and perhaps where the light would come from I'll add some lighter areas and knowing that some of the brush in this case might end up in front of the sandworm itself I have to create the light in certain areas as well just in case the light or I feel that the light should pass in front of the sandworm itself Hopefully you get something from that, that's just to let you see the initial process of it. After that, it's just working with a couple of tools to finalise the image, which I'm going to show you now as well. From here, I decided to use the path blur to create the momentum of movement from the worm and from it passing through the sand. Now, if you're working at this scale, when you first add the path blur, it drops to the centre of your image, so you have to drag it over and then start to add the elements that you want. As this is a massive worm, it's a case of adding points and bending the sand around about the worm because it, if you know the film, they can grow up to 400 metres in length. So it's just looking to create that idea of a massive object, in this case the worm, moving through the sand and how the sand would flow from it. 
A lot of the time I will use reference images or I'll go and look, in this case, back at the film just to see what it was like and how the sand worked with the image. Once I was happy with the effect that I had, I then went back and used the warp tool to further warp the look of the sand around the worm and hopefully creating more of a 3D effect within that because the sand's going to come off the worm at different angles, although it's travelling at fast speeds. So all this is going on in my head at the one time to try and get that voluminous effect of sand, but also to create motion within the image as well, coming from the worm itself. Once I was happy with that, I just then wanted to go in and create more depth within the sand, more texture, to give it a more, and I'll use the term loosely, feel of realism. So thinking about it, I thought the sand closer to the worm is going to be thicker and slightly darker, as it goes out, it's going to get slightly lighter. So again, I chose colours that match the surrounding area of the worm itself. Thinking about how the sand would react in this type of atmosphere. And simply because I'd watched the film, I added more brushes. Again, layering them on top of the brushes that were already there in different layers. And expanded the sand out even further sometimes lightening the sand, sometimes darkening it, until I got the effect, or the final effect, that I was actually really happy with for this style of image. One thing I failed to mention while showing you the brushes and how this image was built up is the fact that I use either a screen display or a pen tablet when I'm editing this type of image. I find compositing so much easier with a pen and tablet or a screen display. It's ergonomically better for you, in my opinion, and it also allows you to interact more with the image itself because you can set your brush pressures, your opacity, which can be set with the mouse, uh, but it allows you to set your brush pressure so that you can work in different elements with different pressures and you can actually build up using the brushes. It's one purchase I would definitely recommend if you are going to be doing a lot of compositing. I do sincerely hope you got something from that. That's my thought process when I am editing an image. I base a lot, even if it is science fiction or fantasy, I base a lot of my edits around the laws of physics from this world, if that makes any sense. So. I do hope that you got something from it in terms of uh, the thought process about building up the layers with and using brushes. Now, brushes are easily downloadable. A lot of them are free to download as well, plus you can create your own. Most of the free ones that I download, I download from BrushEasy.com. I also have purchased brushes uh, from different places as well depending on their look and their feel some i like some i don't like do i find that it's been a waste of money no i don't because you won't always use all the brushes that you've in this case or in my case that i've purchased ah uh, but you can create your own brushes to get the effects that you want if you'd like to see a video on that, put a comment down below and I'll show you, again, it has to be my thought process of how I go about creating them because there's so many ways to do things in Photoshop. Which again brings me to the Photoshop Creative Virtual Summit which is happening in two weeks time I think it is, from the 23rd to the 26th. I'm going to put a link down below to the free pass plus also the VIP pass. Now the VIP pass allows you to watch videos whenever you want, you've lifetime access to them, plus you get extras, you get the notes, you get any, in my case I've created brushes for it, plus I have a few extended edits and I see some of the other creators that are participating as well have got different videos as well within the VIP section, plus other things. So if you want to sign up to that, the link is down below. Thanks again for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video.